Hitler. That's essentially who he was to Christians. Just what Hitler was to the Jews in Nazi Germany. Kill them was his battle cry. Rid the earth of their heresy. Known as the great persecutor of the Christian church, Saul didn't have the upbringing one might picture for a mobster-like personality with a long hit list. Maybe you imagine something like a childhood in the Bronx, but it would be more accurate to say he was groomed in Beverly Hills. Saul grew up in a relatively wealthy Jewish family. His parents were believed to be strict Pharisees. And just like all good, upstanding Pharisee moms and pops, they sent their 14-year-old chip off the old block away to boarding school in Jerusalem. Trained under one of the Harvard A-list rabbis, Gargamel, or Gamaliel, he became a man full of convictions and a fiery temperament. With all of his head knowledge and little heart knowledge, he heard of this rebel movement forming of men and women who wanted to take over the world. And their leader? Well, he was this worst rebel of them all. He wanted to start a revolution. He was out to change the world with his blasphemy. His name? That uprising was forming under this man named Jesus. And Saul planned to stop him. He figured the best way to overthrow this regime was by killing off his followers. We first see Saul show up on the scene at a public execution. There he was, in the crowds, yelling, Stone him! Stone that man! And he smiled as Stephen, the first of the martyrs, took his last breath in a pile of rocks and blood. With renewed energy for his cause, he helped the masses drag believers out of their houses. Believers! Ha! Believers in stupidity. At least that's what he thought. It was time to get serious about his persecution of these Christians. He gladly accepted the next mission and headed off to Damascus, murderous thoughts in his mind, fist poised to fight, and fury in his bones. But on that road, that road to Damascus, something happened. He couldn't ever adequately explain it. There was the flash, and out of nowhere, a voice said his name. His gang with him, his hitmen who were going to help with the murders, stood there like the idiots they were. They all heard the voice, but no one else was there. They were being punked, weren't they? Saul fell to the ground. It was no joke. When he stood up, something even crazier happened. He was suddenly blind. Was it the flash that he saw? No, his thugs could see just fine. In fact, they had to lead him onto Damascus, holding his hand. Imagine, mobsters hand-holding the Godfather. The next thing Saul knew, some guy was putting his dusty hands on his eyes, speaking that rebel's name, Jesus. Ananias watched as something like snake skin, these weird scales, just fell right off of Saul's eyeballs. But that wasn't even the weird part. After he regained his strength, this Hitler guy, Saul, didn't complete his mission to kill the rebels. He actually became one of them. Just like that, he started preaching that Jesus was the Son of God. Leaving behind his mobster days, now going by the name Paul, he had a new kind of mission, one that took him on three significant missionary trips. It wasn't all roses on this side of his crazy Damascus road encounter. In fact, one of those crazy plot twists you just can't make up, he found himself in the very footprints of Stephen having stones hurled at him. He was arrested and tried several times. He was in prison. Still a prisoner, during one of his inmate transfers, he found himself in a life-threatening storm. The original inspiration for Tom Hanks' castaway role. But this Saul-turned-Paul, mobster-turned-missionary wasn't just some persecuted man in prison, counting the days with chalk marks on the wall. He spent his time writing. He wrote until he couldn't feel his fingers. He wrote encouraging letters to believers. Believers! He wrote warnings to backsliders. He wrote thoughtfully, gently, steadfastly. His fear of those rebels turned into a deep faith in the Redeemer, and his words continue to encourage and challenge believers a few thousand years later. Saul turned Paul, mobster turned missionary. Who would have thought?